Welcome back to another episode of Consciously Clueless. I'm your host, Carly, and I'll be your guide on this journey from consciousness to cluelessness and back around again. Thanks for joining me for another Sunday solo episode. Whether it's Sunday night and you're getting ready for your week, Monday morning and you're on your way to work, or whatever day this podcast has found you, I'm really glad you're here. This podcast is sponsored by TerraSeed. TerraSeed is on a mission to disrupt the vitamin industry, empower vegans, and reduce plastic waste in the world. They put everything plant-based people struggle to get in an all-inclusive, vegan, compostable package multivitamin that replenishes them and our planet every single day. Seriously, y'all, win, win, win. Even if you're not vegan, this vitamin will help you get those key nutrients that you need. I am so excited to share a discount code for your first purchase. Use code CARLY50 at checkout to get 50% off. Again, that's C-A-R-L-Y-5-0 for 50% off your first purchase at terraseed.com. Don't forget this code so they know I sent you. Okay, so today I'm going to go through some of the most common questions I get as a vegan and people who are vegan will probably be nodding along for most of these as they're pretty normal, but that's okay. They are common questions and I am here to answer them for you so you can listen to them and not have to Google them or ask people. You can start here and see if this helps. So probably the number one Number one question to the point where it's kind of laughable or like a joke among vegans at this point because it is just so common. But if you are still wondering, here we go. Where do you get your protein? I still get this question. If you've listened to any of the interview episodes, you've probably heard some guests talk about this. So there seems to be a panic when you tell people that you're vegan that you are somehow automatically protein deficient. And I am here to remind you that that is simply not true. So listen to this. I'm going to list off the places vegans and or plant-based people who maybe aren't totally vegan but eat primary plant-based. This is where we get our protein. Lentils, tofu, peanut butter, seitan, hummus, Beans, almonds, tempeh, quinoa, sunflower seeds, soy milk, spinach, kale, broccoli, chickpeas, peanuts, avocado, and so many more. If you actually start to look at the protein content of different plant-based foods, there's a lot. It's truly all over. You can use some of my favorite apps like the Daily Dozen or Chronometer if you're really looking to kind of break down where you'd get that, but it's actually pretty easy. So where do you get your protein? Now we know. Another really common question or comment that vegans often get or hear is, aren't humans designed to eat meat? Shouldn't humans be eating meat? Aren't we naturally carnivores? And there's actually a lot of science and technology to show us that really we've primarily ate plants for thousands, millions, zillions, whatever. You get the idea. We've been eating plants for a long time. And of course, there are generations and generations and generations back that have been eating meat, but it's in really small doses It wasn't an exclusive feast on meat. A lot of indigenous cultures around the world mostly thrived or thrive currently on a plant-based diet. So sorry to all those people that are eating paleo. It's not really a thing. And also it's not really good for you. I said what I said. So when humans started to eat more meat, some scientists were actually theorizing that maybe that is due to climate change. And now, ironically, we're needing to eat less because of that climate change as well. So that is one that 
people kind of question, like, aren't we supposed to eat meat? And even there's a lot of talk about like, well, what about our teeth? We have pointy teeth or this, that, and the other thing. Our teeth aren't actually supposed to be that helpful for meat. We have molars to grind plants. We have intestines that are designed to digest plants much easier than meat, like say a lion's digestive system. So the answer is, are humans designed to eat meat? I can't conclusively say, but not exclusively and not as much as we are. This is one that is so silly, but I have to include because of how common it is and I just need to lay this to rest. Vegan food is not inherently lacking in flavor. It's just not. If you've made vegan food and it doesn't have enough flavor, then you didn't add enough flavor. Just like meats that you season with plants or vegetables you season with plants, whatever it is, you just need to know how to cook better. Everything comes from plants. You can make delicious vegan food. That's all I'm going to say. I can't even go into that more because of course, of course you can. And if you need help and you need inspiration, of course, let me know because I don't want anyone to not be vegan because they think there won't be flavor. Another one that I think is really interesting that has come up before is why do you not care about humans or why do you just care about animals? So for me in the beginning, I definitely couldn't have answered this one. I couldn't have answered it. But the more I learned about the connection to the environment, so deforestation, water pollution, production of greenhouse gases, that was connection enough to show that it is more than just about animals. It is about humans and the world that we inhabit. And also, not just that, but... It's a human rights issue. Intensive factory farming is really, really hard on the workers. There are a lot of people misused and abused in these factory farms as employees, often people that are here with no documentation, people that are poor and have no other options. There are a lot of reasons to rethink the systems that are creating our food just as much as what we are using to create that food. So there are a lot of reasons that veganism can help beyond just the animals, which of course is amazing. And finally, one of the biggest ones that kind of can encompass a few different issues, is it hard to be vegan? So let me answer this with some caveats as we go. On the whole, For people who have access to affordable food, that is a huge thing. That is a privilege. It does not have to be hard. I know that it seems impossible at first if you have grown up with a standard Western diet because where do you start? But actually, the switch can be a little easier than you've ever imagined. Take your all-time favorite meals Figure out how to make them vegan. You don't need to learn a million new things just because you're going vegan. You can slowly just go off of the things you would already eat. If you love bagels and cream cheese, get bagels and cream cheese that are vegan. The other thing about being vegan in 2021, or whenever you're listening to this, this day and age, it is truly never been easier when you have access to affordable food. Because there are so many different substitutions for milks and cream cheese and, you know, any dairy product, any meat product, there is some sort of protein, plant-based protein product. It has never been easier in that way. You can buy rice, beans, noodles, you name it. You probably are already eating meals that would be pretty easy to convert into a veganized meal and you don't even realize it. There are so many ways to do so. Now remember that caveat. This is when you have access to affordable food that is vegan and that is fresh. That is something that so, so, so many people in the United States and beyond around the world do not have access to. 
If you are listening and you have access to food that is vegan and fresh and that you can afford, please take advantage of that. Please take advantage of that because that is truly a gift. There are a lot of communities who are in food deserts who don't have access to that and for them it would be harder because it can be expensive when you live in places where expensive food like that is just outrageous. It is cheaper to buy fast food or convenience store stuff and there is no judgment for that. But if you have access to this kind of food and can afford it, it is a total privilege and it can be easy and it can actually save you money in the long run. It might take a little bit of figuring that out, but I promise it can. And if you are listening to this and you're like, okay, some of those questions, that helped a little bit. I still need help though. That is one of the things I truly love doing is answering questions. I have an offer as a transformation coach, 60-minute plant-based eating tips and tricks consultation. So we meet for an hour and I give a whole presentation and then you give me some information about specifically what you're looking for and I send up follow materials that are catered just to you. Or we can work together six weeks, 12 weeks, or six months as a health coach, as a transformation coach. We can throw other things in there too that you're looking to make changes on, whatever it is. If you're not ready for something like this and you listen to this podcast and you're like, yeah, okay, I'm interested, but I can't afford or don't want to work with someone yet or maybe at all, that's okay too. Places like Pinterest, And really just Google can be your best friend in trying to transition to eating more plant-based. If you're on social media, follow some accounts that totally inspire you to try new food, whatever it is to at least make you shift in that direction and think a little bit differently can make a huge impact for animals, for your health and for the world. And maybe someday you'll be the one getting these questions. Thanks for listening to another episode of Consciously Clueless. If you enjoyed that episode, hit subscribe wherever you're listening. If that's on Apple Podcasts, leave a review and you could be read on air as a review of the week. It really helps me out. If you haven't yet, head over to patreon.com slash consciously carly and check out the growing community over there. There's bonus podcast content, plus there is a ton of resources like yoga videos and meditations, basically like working with a coach, but just kind of slowly at your own pace, and you get access to what it would be like to work with me. And as always, if you do want to work together, email me at consciouslycarly at gmail.com. Until next time. Thank you.